coming up next on this edition of In the City. The long-awaited Miracle Field Grand Opening is finally here. And crime near MTSU's campus has been on the rise lately. Find out what city officials are doing to keep our community safe. Plus, after three years of discussions, the Lineball Technology Engagement Center has broke ground. And the Murfreesboro City Council hosts another town hall meeting and answers questions from concerned community members. We'll tell you all about those stories and more coming up right now on this edition of In the City. Welcome to another edition of In the City, your source for what's happening right here in the city of Murfreesboro. I'm Cecilia Harrell. The grand opening of Murfreesboro Miracle Field recently took place this past month. Producer Steve Burris was there and explains from groundbreaking to grand opening how the Miracle Field project came about. On Thursday, February 4th, 2016, Boston Red Sox pitcher, Vanderbilt alum and Blackman High School graduate David Price and his foundation, Project 1-4, held a luncheon and groundbreaking ceremony for the Miracle Field at McKnight Park. Miracle Field is a baseball field with a rubberized surface for special needs children. Potential donors, as well as the city of Murfreesboro, attended the ceremony. The Murfreesboro City Council partnered with Project 1-4 to pay for the $3.2 million construction of Miracle Field with the foundation paying the city back. To solidify the relationship between the city and Price, the mayor awarded him with a key to the city. From your family in Murfreesboro, I want to give you the key to the city to let you know that this home will always be here for you. Price got the fundraising ball rolling by writing a $300,000 check to the city of Murfreesboro. And here is a check to the first, the, pledge. The first pledge on um, on my behalf. We did for $300,000 to just get it going, get it started, and we know we'll make the rest. Everybody then went outside in the blustery weather to officially break ground on the park. Trinity Builders was awarded the bid and began construction on July 14, 2016. Here is a nine-month construction span of the facility. The ribbon cutting for the Miracle Field was Saturday, May 6, 2017.
Even before the ribbon was cut at the Miracle Field Grand Opening, you could feel the excitement in the air. We took the time to talk to some of the people that were instrumental in the construction of this facility. It really has been an awesome experience. You know, all started when we approached the city of Murfreesboro and how much on board they were and how easy it was to uh, get them behind the project. People that have bought into the idea, the, the companies, the businesses, the individuals, everything has been good. And it's been a very, very pleasant surprise. You know, we're extremely excited to get it kicked off today and, you know, get everything going and get ball games started with the kids. And, uh, uh, the commitment shown by the community here uh, for something like this is just an amazing thing and Murfreesboro Parks and Recreation is just glad to be a part of that to bring it to the community and see it come to fruition. When the city and Bonnie Price and uh, Project One Forward came to us to uh, present the Miracle Field it was just it just hit right in the target of our mission which is to improve the quality of life for the people of Rutherford County with an emphasis on health care. I've been waiting for a year now for this. I mean, they told me April 1st, I'm like, oh, then they said April 8th, then they kept changing dates because the field wasn't ready because of the weather. And I was like, come on, come on, come on, come on. You know, get time, get time, get here, get here. You know, when we come together and do things as a community, this is what happens. This is a great example of this ballpark right here. This is one of the best facilities in the country. And to have it here in Murfreesboro, it's just a blessing. That's what this game, it's, and it's such a beautiful game in the structure of it, to allow people to, to uh, experience life in a very uh, microcosm. And, uh, and to, to provide that for those in our community that are dealing with so many uh, other challenges, uh, families and children that, that deal with challenges every day, to allow them to experience the same kind of thing that uh, all children do. Uh, in this kind of beautiful facility is just, well, Kurt said it, it's a blessing. Let's go have fun, play a little baseball. Crime near MTSU's campus has been the center of attention lately. MTSU, the city, Murfreesboro Police, and local apartment managers are teaming up to help prevent future crimes from happening. Privately owned apartment complexes near MTSU's campus have been the center of attention lately. Drug and violence related crimes have been on the rise since mid-2016. The city, Murfreesboro Police Department, MTSU, and apartment managers are now working together to decrease these incidents. Murfreesboro is a very safe place. Uh, we have a very low crime rate. We enjoy a very low uh, probability of being the victim of a crime. Uh, and in these particular instances, we have uh, very targeted situations that have drug nexuses. Now, drugs aren't the entire motivating factor behind the recent uh, events, but they're a large part of that. So, uh, in, unless you're dealing drugs, unless you're uh, buying drugs, unless you're engaging in uh, dangerous activities, uh, going to large parties late at night that uh, spiral out of control, for example, if you're not engaging in those type of behaviors, your chances of, of becoming a victim are extremely low. City leaders met with apartment complex managers on May 17th to come up with a plan to keep our city safe. A representative from Peak Campus released a statement about the recent increase in crimes. Our management company takes the crime issue in Murfreesboro very seriously. The safety and comfort of our residents is our top priority. The Peak Campus properties, student quarters properties, and College Grove apartments continue to partner with local law enforcement, host monthly crime prevention and awareness meetings, and enforce the terms of our lease agreement. In addition, property ownership is working with the city on potential additional measures to further enhance security for our residents and staff. Complexes that meet certain criteria and implement the city's recommended safety practices will be eligible for a special emblem that could be displayed to potential tenants. The city will maintain an online site of complexes who earn this recognition. The site will include crime data and reported incidents by area which is also currently available through crimemapping.com. Be aware of your surroundings. Don't take unnecessary risks. Uh, just watch the time and place that you're going, and if you can travel in, in pairs, that's even better. Uh, I know MTSU offers escorts for students uh, in the immediate area surrounding campus and across campus, so if you're going to be out late at night, use that service. Uh, the police department will do the same thing. If you need an escort from one place to the other, we will do the same thing. Maintaining a safe and family-friendly community is the main goal. To learn more, please visit our website at murfreesborotn.gov. For City TV, I'm Cecilia Harrell. 
A major addition to the city finally broke ground this past month. The Lineball Technology Engagement Center is located on the campus of Hopgood Elementary School and is sure to better the community in many ways. Five, four, three, two, one, shovel. Three years ago, it was just an idea, but now dreams are becoming reality. The Lineball Technology Engagement Center broke ground on May 23rd on the campus of Hopgood Elementary School. Through the collaborative efforts of the library board and staff, City of Murfreesboro, Murfreesboro City School Board, Rutherford County, and the Christie Houston Foundation, we are here to break ground on the Lime Ball Technology Engagement Center at Hopgood. This facility is the result of many partnerships throughout the community. I am delighted that the county can be a part of this. This is a wonderful example of partnerships and how partnerships through many organizations and groups actually work. This will be the very first standalone public community technology center in the state of Tennessee and one of very few in our nation. This facility is a huge piece in bringing our community together and this puzzle to come together. So I cannot wait to see this completed. Did you know 41% of people in our community do not have internet access? This facility will greatly benefit everyone in the area. We are really looking to help people in this community especially, but not just here, but throughout uh, Murfreesboro and Rutherford County to um, be equipped with the necessary tools that they need to find a job, to help with education. Uh, students today always have assignments where they need a computer. Um, to be able to be in the workforce, to have training, um, to be able to have those skills before they even interview, to apply for a job, to take online tests and online courses if you don't have a computer or internet access, and those types of things you just can't do from your smartphone. Inside, you will find computers, tablets, e-readers, and even 3D printers available for public use. In addition to the state-of-the-art technology, there will also be meeting spaces ranging from small conference rooms to large classrooms and multifunction rooms. Right now, they've told us that from the time they have the notice to proceed, it should take about 10 months. So we're looking probably February or March of 2018. So it'll go pretty fast. The Lineball Technology Engagement Center will be a place for community members to come together to make great things happen. I get very emotional. This is my baby. And so to see it finally come to fruition is just, there's no words. It's just overwhelming. To learn more, visit ctclinebaugh.org. Reporting for City TV, I'm Cecilia Harrell. The city of Murfreesboro has now hosted three town hall meetings where they go out into the community to meet with concerned residents and answer questions. The latest meeting was held at Olive Branch Church on Minerva Drive. The Murfreesboro City Council has begun a series of town hall meetings, a time to sit down with residents to answer questions they might have or just listen to concerns. This is our third session of our town hall uh, programs that we've been doing. Uh, we started, the first one was at Oakland's Mansion. The second one we did it in the Blackman area. Uh, the third one we you know, wanted to have more in the south, southeast area of town. And so uh, really the agenda is there's no agenda. The meeting started out with a subject we all deal with, and that's traffic. What is being done to help alleviate traffic in Murfreesboro? The transportation issue, I wish that there was an easy solution that I could tell you, you know, stop building, stop everything, but that's, you know, right now um, there's not an easy solution on it. And we're hoping that we'll get some relief with some of the decisions the legislature has made. The one thing that I can confirm to you now, there are a lot of people thinking about this issue. That's why we do things like we did, uh, we just got through two studies in our downtown area through the Highland study, Highland Avenue study, and our bottom study, trying to get ahead of that with planning. The next question was about apartment complexes. Why are there so many apartment complexes being built in Murfreesboro? Everybody can't afford a house. So what's the next best thing? It's an apartment. Everybody doesn't want a yard. The next best thing is an apartment. 
I mean, if we did a study, and I think the study says all the apartments around here are 80 to 90 percent occupancy. That's pretty darn good. That's why we have so many apartments. We have the largest university here, and we're got, there is a need for apartments. We can't just say we're just going to build houses. We're not going to be apartment, build apartments. But we've got to be strategic about where we build those apartments. I agree with that. A question came up about the state's increase in the gas tax and the reduction of the food tax, and if that would hurt Murfreesboro financially. The bill that was approved by the General Assembly and signed by the governor did include both the increase in the gas tax to fund road projects, and that goes to a special fund that builds roads. Uh, to the general fund, there was a 20% uh, cut in the, get the tax on groceries. So that 20% gas and uh, tax reduction in groceries will impact the general fund a little bit. But the fortunate thing is that the cities continue to grow. We've had new retailers come here. Our population has grown. We are projecting additional growth in our sales tax this year, despite the grocery tax reduction. Another very popular question residents have is the red light cameras. Why does Murfreesboro have them? We have a major red light running problem in the city of Murfreesboro. From the standpoint of revenue coming into the city, I think all the council members, we were on record for years saying this, you know, we don't do it for, for money. The sole purpose that we have them is in one of the six busiest intersections is to be able to, to monitor those intersections but not have police officers sitting in those intersections 24-7. The city saw a 50% reduction in crashes um, citywide, not just at the, uh, the intersections with the red light cameras in. So what we do know is it's saving lives. While we may come down differently on the issue where what decided it for me was the safety of our citizens. And it, uh, it, it's a difference. It makes a difference in the, in the safety of our citizens. What is the city's ordinance on people selling newspapers for profit in city streets? I think where we came down on it uh, the, when it was presented the last time was the fact that if it was on private property, if you had an individual or a business that uh, would allow the solicitation on their private property, then it was fine. But in the public right of way, it created a hazard for our citizens. What's the city and the Murfreesboro Police Department doing about violence occurring in apartment complexes? The council about five or six months ago passed an unruly gathering ordinance. Um, what that unruly, unruly gathering ordinance did is allow the, the municipality to be able to not only cite the tenant when there's an issue, but we now can cite the landlord. So that's, that was the first step and I think that's helping. The second step is we are setting up meetings with what we have deemed the top 10 problem complexes in Murfreesboro. The problem that we have, we're meeting with apartment managers, but they're not the owners. And a lot of the owners of these apartment complexes are all out of state. So there's going to have to be um, diligence with the apartment owners on who they lease to. Middle Point Landfill will be at capacity within the next five to ten years. What is the city in Rutherford County going to do with their trash? As trash is treated more like water and more like electricity, you know, it's if you use it, you're going to have to pay for it. The people who recycle are not going to be paying near as much as what everyone that just throws the trash through. So it is a huge issue. It's not an issue that is going to get a lot of paper. Um, but y'all, everyone just needs to know that's something that um, over the next two years, we've got a consultant that Kurt and I sit on the committee right now. We've partnered with the county, with Eagleville, Smyrna, and Laverne, and we're all trying to figure out what we're going to what we're going to do. Um, we're getting closer. The city wants to thank all the participants of this town hall meeting. Mitchell Nielsen students recently spent an afternoon on Stones River floating a boat they built with math. I was there to get a first-hand look. Who says math class can't be fun? Mr. Clarity, a teacher at Mitchell Nielsen Elementary School, teaches math to fifth graders in a unique and engaging way. By building a boat. Over the past few months, students have been solving math equations to build this boat. Their hard work finally paid off. 
Students geared up in life jackets and grabbed paddles to finally float around in the boat they helped build. The boat set sail in the Stones River on Tuesday, May 9th. Students, parents, and outdoor Murfreesboro gathered to celebrate the students' hard work. This is the third time we've done this, and what makes it so special is the fifth graders built this boat. They've worked in their classroom to build it, uh, using math and science standards and every fifth grader at Mitchell Nielsen has had their hand in this boat measuring and working on all the math standards and so today we get to see the product in action and we brought it out here to the um, trailhead and get to put it in the water and float it. Students not only used their brain power to help build the boat, they were also very hands-on in the process and it's so much more meaningful for students to work on these math skills when they have an actual product in their hand and that they're going to see the results so much better than a worksheet and you can see how much fun they're having. Reporting for City TV, I'm Cecilia Harrell. Believe it or not, Murfreesboro's transit bus system called Rover celebrated 10 years in May. We called up with the Assistant Transportation Director to see how they celebrated this milestone. Rover's been around for 10 years now and that's kind of what we're celebrating today is our 10 year anniversary and we're, we're celebrating our riders that, that have been loyal to us and all the new riders that, uh, that we have and those that we hope to gain. Um, there's a lot of exciting things that are coming around the horizon for Rover. Uh, we're, we're looking on, in the early stages of building a new transit center. We hope to have additional routes once that's done, uh, maybe expand our service. Uh, but all of that, you know, takes a lot of planning and, and uh, uh, funds and all that good stuff, so, but we're working on it. Um, if you just ask any of our riders, they'll tell you that this is a lifesaver to most of them. Um, you know, Rover, Rover helps a lot of people, and uh, uh, there's people that uh, do not have the ability to drive or people that do not have the uh, transportation uh, can't afford it, and they, they use this rover service, and it, it uh, helps them get to their job. It helps them get to doctor's appointments, shopping for things that they need. Um, it's just a general good service for our, for our public. The council is, is really on board with Rover, um, as well as the mayor and our city manager, and, and uh, you know we're all looking and working together to uh, expand this service and uh, make, it, make it better for the citizens of Murfreesboro. And as we grow, the need is going to be even bigger. So we're anticipating some pretty big things coming up. We have a fleet of 11 buses right now. We provide bus service uh, on seven different routes in the city, five days a week, Monday through Friday, from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. The fare is a dollar. If you want to look up the routes and so on on our website, you can go on the City of Murfreesboro website, type in Rover in the search bar, and that'll show you everything you need to know. We have uh, roughly in the neighborhood of 15, 16 drivers. Um, these are full and part-time drivers. Uh, we have, I believe, three right now that have been with us since the beginning. Even the drivers enjoy, you know, working in this service and, and meeting all of the, the passengers that we have, getting to know them, and, and uh, it's sort of like a big family in, in many cases. If you've never been on a Rover bus, come out, take a ride on it, and see how easy it is to ride and, and how nice it is to get around town and not have to mess with driving through all our construction and everything that we're working on, and the Rover will do it for you. With the school year coming to a close, many kids will have plenty of free time this summer. We have a way your children can learn and have fun this summer. With the school year ending soon and temperatures on the rise, it's nice to find something children can enjoy indoors. Tucked away inside Patterson Park Community Center is the MGL Library a small branch of the Linebaugh Public Library System. The MGL Library is now offering youth summer programs. The library already offers story hours every Friday at 10 a.m., but beginning in June, these story hours will include special guests and activities. Well, we're really excited to extend our regular Friday story times throughout the summer as we explore this year's summer reading theme, which I'm very excited about. It is Build a Better World. So we've got a lot of special guests coming out. They're going to talk to us about um, how they help our community, and they're going to help us also do a lot of fun activities and crafts. June 2nd is the opening event and will be all about mad science. June 9th is Snowbird Storytime. June 16th is the Reptile Show with Ashley. June 23rd is all about Habitat for Humanity. June 30th, there will be special guests from the fire department. 
On July 7th, there will be special guests from the police department. On July 14th, EMTs will be stopping in for a special visit. On July 21st, the Wilderness Station will be hosting an animal show. The summer reading program will conclude on July 28th with a picnic and a service project. Our ultimate goal is always the same. It's to provide for the kids, provide for the parents what they need, uh, make sure that things like the summer slide don't happen as much, that uh, just the kids have a good time over the summer, but at the same time that they're really learning something and they're growing as people. Everything is gonna be for free, and that includes getting into the library. Yes, we're inside of Patterson Park Community Center, but you don't have to pay the fees with Parks and Rec to get into the library. If you want to learn more about the MGL Library Summer Reading Program, you can call 615-907-3429 or visit limebaugh.org. Reporting for City TV, I'm Cecilia Harrell. The City of Murfreesboro is building a brand new park in the western part of the city. We sat down with the Assistant Parks and Recreation Director to talk about how they decided what to put in the park. So about five years ago, uh, our leaders really said, you know what, Murfreesboro is growing. We need to match that growth with the parks that we have to offer. We're really fortunate to have a very uh, progressive uh, council that looks forward like that and says, we need you know, more facilities like that in the future. That drove us to where we decided that we needed to go to the west side of town. We hired a firm uh, to start looking at properties and they analyzed for uh, over a year all the different properties that were for sale and the ones that might be for sale in the future to figure out which one of these might be able to hit these broad um, ideas and principles that we established many years ago. This park is bordered by uh, three roads I think people really uh, recognize. It's Burnt Knob Road, Veterans Parkway, and then 840. One of our main priorities uh, early on in the process, uh, after we picked an architectural and engineering firm to start the conceptual master plan, that firm helped us reach the public through different ways, through surveys, through public meetings, and we had a lot of success, a lot of, a lot of returns on some of our questionnaires about it. So um, that was really the primary part of that conceptual master plan. After that, we were able to come up with three different options. Our council and our Parks and Recreation Commission held uh, joint meetings where they studied uh, the, the plans, they looked at it, we had open discussions about the benefits, the pros and cons, and then the amenities within. And so we, after we uh, had all these discussions, we boiled all those uh, comments down that led us to our final uh, conceptual master plan. When you look at this conceptual plan, you'll see a lot of baseball, softball. We've got 13 fields. Uh, one is kind of like a community complex where we can host all kinds of games. Another side will be served uh, for the community, uh, but it will also serve regional tournaments and that has championship complexes and people will come all over to use this and it'll be a, really a shining star we think for Murfreesboro. Something else that we're really excited about is we've got two multi-purpose fields that'll be able to be used for uh, soccer, lacrosse, we can use those for practice facilities, and then also just pick up games if people want to go out and need a flat surface to play, run, do exercises, that type of thing. Another amenity that we heard loud and clear was that people wanted open space, so we're really glad we've got a big open space where people can go relax, they can walk. Uh, we're going to include some type of a performance area where people can bring in portable staging. We can do our own programs there. We can rent that space out for people to do concerts. Uh, that'll have all the electrical hookups and everything required. Uh, something that we don't have in this community is an interactive water feature or a splash pad. Uh, so that's something we're looking at there and we're going to have some type of interactive water feature that hopefully will be unique and fit the setting. When, when we think about interactive water feature, we want people to look at it and say, hey, is it art? or is it something you play in? And the answer is yes. yes. And it's gonna be just a really cool area. Part of this process, we're gonna have playgrounds and pavilions, things that people are used to seeing in the park system. One of the most popular uh, things that we provide as a park system are trails. Uh, so we're really excited. We're maximizing the amount of trails. We're gonna make it as wide as we can, so maybe we can host some races out there. Our next step uh, was we're gonna take this conceptual plan and put it into an actual plan and every amenity in the park will have a detail and from that we'll draw construction documents through our architectural and engineering firm. Um, after that, uh, we'll put it out to bid and hopefully start construction as soon as possible. This has been a fun project. I think it's universally agreeable. Uh, we need a park on this side of town and we're really lucky uh, that we've got the support from our council, from our administration and also the community in general uh, to go out and build something that we're going to be really proud of for uh, hopefully generations to come. 
Well, that's it for this edition of In the City. As always, for more information about the City of Murfreesboro, you can always visit our website anytime at murfreesborotn.gov. And if you want to see one of the stories that you've seen today or catch up on some of the latest city news, you can always visit the City of Murfreesboro's YouTube channel. I'm Cecilia Harrell, and until next time, we look forward to seeing you in the city.